Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Maddie B. Scrimmages have officially began across Pennsylvania high school football. So, Matt, I know you guys had your first game. How did that go? What do you have planned uh, for the next coming week? Well, when I look at the scrimmages, I look at it from the perspective of there's one way you win a scrimmage, and you win it by not getting injured. And when you have only 28 guys dressed or 29 guys dressed, then we only had one minor injury with the, with, with, when the game ended. So I consider that a, a major win for us. And I know like throughout our scrimmage, there were a couple plays that happened that, that were kind of questionable. Like our guys came off the edge hard and they, and like at this point, my team understands my perspective on scrimmages, which is like absolutely do not hit the quarterback. And like, it, like, Basically, that's my primary rule is don't hit the quarterback because nobody needs their quarterback hurt in a meaningless scrimmage. So they came off the edge. The quarterback was right there. They tagged off. Like in in a real game situation, they're making that sack. But the quarterback throws it and completes it, and they, they awarded the touchdown. But like the kids looked at me, and I was like – I just pointed to my chest. I was like, that's on me. That's 100% my fault. You did – Exactly what you what I wanted you to do, and there's no bo- there's no state championship rings won in a scrimmage. And one of the other plays was our quarterback stepped up into the pocket and he threw he threw a really nice pass down the sideline, and the officials blew it dead because I said I told him up front I was like I would much rather you err on the side of blow the whistle dead than to have a guy either like standing back air in the pocket and get drilled or to have my running backs trying to fight for an extra yard on a five yard gain. And, and then they get, they get injured with a bigger injury that takes them out of the regular season. So, I mean, a couple little plays that, that there was, there were some highlights too. And most importantly, it was playing someone different, play, having an opponent to play and getting to hit somebody else. So I, it was, it was a little bit more meaningful to me because it was against my alma mater. Went back over the mountain and scrimmage ported. So it was my first time being back in the stadium, not as the home team. Very cool. I bet that was a good experience for you. Absolutely. And now I don't mean to blindside you here, but um, because I forgot, I, I told you about this before. I don't think we talked about it, but um, Brett Favre, dude, has come out against youth playing football, which would be, I think, what did he say, under 14? They're like doing some campaign against concussions. So like yeah. in terms of you guys scrimmaging, if that takes hold, you're looking at a freshman coming in at that age. This is the first time they ever played tackle football. Do you think having scrimmages and like hands-off practices are going to affect the way they develop because they haven't grown up knowing how to tackle or drive through people, if that makes sense? I think – for people that are only interested in football, it may have some effect. But I think if you look at like some of your athletes, like a lot of kids play wrestling and and play do other wrestling. Sport. You mean wrestling? Yes. W- no WWE. <laughs> they come off the top rope. Not ev- not everyone's willing to wear the singlet. <laughs> the wrestling. Every- everyone's willing to do some wrestling. So I mean, you do pick up some tackling skills and you're wrestling with your cousins. I guess if you have those cousins, some people I feel like they might not. But but I think I I see both sides to it because on one hand, there's there's tons of videos where coaches that never played a meaningful down of anything line up the real big kid with the real small kid and Oklahoma drill them and watch the little kid get run over and like all that does is just damages kids will to want to play football and it pushes them to soccer and golf and you lose them. So, I mean, I, I, I look at some of the programs in this area and you have several, several teams that had to cancel their regular season and had to co-op with another high school because simply because they didn't have the numbers and, 
and one of the teams that was within our conference last year, Williamsburg, was a playoff team. And they ended up with like eight or nine guys going out and then and now had to merge into the Juniata Valley, which is going to be a better – they're going to be one of the better teams in our conference, now upgraded with a couple more more athletes on the roster. So, I mean, I think as, as the numbers as a whole go down and to really be successful with football, I think like it requires a lot of commitment. If you, if you don't have high quality coaches being able to, to feel, to help with providing the proper instruction, then I, then I think maybe that's the route to go, to be honest. I mean, as much as that bothers me because I'm such a diehard football guy, it, it, the lower level kids, you have to have people that that not just care about the kids, but they put them in the, they put them in positions to be successful. That's true. I mean, honestly, I feel like a lot of the coaching at that at those young ages has to hurt people, just in terms of scheme and like positioning and stuff like that. Because I would think that a lot of those coaches are parents. I know even from just like t-ball and stuff like you get a lot of dads that are just involved that never really played sports themselves so they're like giving kids just poor advice and i know like it's going to be hard especially if you're a parent that's not paying for like extra camps or like one-on-one teaching from like a reputable instructor like even growing up i played baseball like i was meeting up with like major league baseball actual players to get instruction on hitting and pitching and stuff like that I know that's a luxury not a lot of kids have. And so football, I feel like it's even worse because, like you said, you have guys that grew up on, like, those hard, tough practices. And then I think that just goes all the way up. I mean, you hear about programs like Wisconsin and stuff that still pride themselves in that. Iowa. I mean, how many times is Iowa in trouble for their workouts? So, like, you have that, and then um, where do you go from there? But – I don't even know if it would make a difference because like, I think with the way the offenses are going, the scheme (laughs) scheme is a big thing. So like, if you're able to get players that can catch, which I know even in high school is tough for some kids. And then even kids that could throw the ball or like even read a defense and stuff. Maybe you don't need that tackling, but like just having a 14 year old cutoff isn't set in stone. I mean, I remember, I'm pretty sure that, like, just looking back, I there's no way, like, I didn't at least have a mild concussion in one of, like, our ninth grade games. Because I vividly remember, I have no idea who we were playing, I don't remember at this point, but we ran back-to-back passes, I was wide receiver, so I was spread out, and I ran, like, a slant or something, like, I don't even remember. I just remember, um, I thought the hit came early, like, I was reaching up, like, trying to jump for the ball. And just got rocked. And I everything was blurry. And I just know that the very next play, they had me run like a, a streak down the field. And I, I know the reason I know this is because we watched it in the film room. And I ran and I was wide open. The ball just like hits off me. Like I, I was just so out of it. <laughs> that like I just come to the sideline after like, where is, what's wrong? I'm like, well, well I don't know what the, what the hell is even going on. So like I was like out of it. And I had other friends too. Like I remember one. I, don't, I think it might have even been younger, though. So maybe to Brett Favre's point where he like actually threw up on the field because he was rocked so hard. So like just starting at 14. Like I know that's the exact age I was. I know I was rocked. Probably had a concussion. Like in, in today's protocol, I would never would have passed. Like you watched a film. And of course, I don't have it. I, I'm sure that it's probably gone. If they have like an old ninth grade film somewhere, I'd be laughing. <laughs> but I would show it on the show. <laughs> If I, if I came across it, but, um, I, I just remember like, yeah, that was, that was one where who cares if I started at 14, great. Still got my first concussion that age. Probably. I mean, maybe the younger hits add up, but what's the difference? Like you said, jumping off your couch, hitting your head off the wall. Maybe you're like wrecking your car. Like there are other factors that I, I think like even just being in a car accident would be worse just because of the velocity, but. I would think, and and I think there's a lot of kids that bike accidents and and different things like that 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 could factor into it. But I I think if if they went that route, would the lower levels would you would you have more participation in a flag type setting? Because the reason I say that is 
over the weekend, I was able to watch my godson's team play, and they're in a flag league because they're younger, and the same principles apply. You know, as, as we're talking about trying to to get them ready for football, you know, are they tackling? No, but are they tracking the near hip? Yes. Are the flags located at about thigh to hip level? Yes. So, I mean, the same principles apply that you would use when you go into whether you're pulling a flag or you're going to, to make a tackle. A lot of those same skills can be taught, but maybe doing it in a way that reduces the amount of coaches that get in on it. And, and I know that that's, that's a harsh thing to say as someone who's on the inside right now as a head coach, but – I also worry that when you have, if you're in a place like I'm fortunate enough that we have enough coaches that we can provide the, the necessary instruction. If I'm at a smaller school or a, a bigger school and I don't have the staff and you're trying to provide that instruction, I mean, you may have to just get whatever assistance you can that may not be as knowledgeable in in the proper techniques i mean i know some of that is how you're teaching the coaches as well but there's only so many hours in the day yeah i have one more thought on this just because like i've seen it in the real world i almost just wonder like if parents should push their their kids into more physical stuff maybe even like martial arts when they're younger or wrestling like we joked about earlier but in all honesty like i think some of that physicality that you're not going to get playing basketball. You're not going to get uh, playing baseball where like to the point where leverage matters and just getting into that hand to hand type stuff, like blocking on the outside, like you're not going to have any impact into that. And I think it can affect you in the real world too. Like I've been, I mean, I go to a bunch of concerts. I've seen like mosh pits and stuff where, you know, that there's some big guys just lifting tons of weight. And like get into a little scuffle and you think that they're going to be able to like knock you over. Like I'm a, I'm a big guy over six foot and guys that are like way bigger than me come in and they're just getting knocked on their ass just because they don't know how to, how to take a hit in a mosh pit. So it's comical at some point where like you've seen guys, I've been in a scuffle where a guy come up bigger than me. And I think like, all right, I'm gonna have to brace myself because I'm going to get rocked or he lowers his shoulder. I don't even move. It's like, what the hell are you injecting yourself like with like air? <laughs> like, how are you that big and not know how to do like any physical, like hand to hand type stuff? And I think football, just being involved in that and in physical type sports, I think if you go your entire young life and like you said, maybe you have cousins stuff, you're, you're scuffling, you're doing some wrestling fighting, um, as kids do. But if you don't have that, you go into a real world situation and it's going to be a real eye opener for some of these kids. And then uh, like you said about the numbers, you, you have your first real hit. Like Mike Tyson said, you have a, everyone has a plan to they get hit in the face or whatever he said. <laughs> like, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a bunch of kids be like, yeah, I can finally play football. First hit their rock. They're like, I'm out of here. I'm not playing. So I almost wonder if it's going to become like many colleges, you know, where like you have the smaller colleges that drive only regional where you're going to have like two or three towns come together where like, I think youth football started to go that direction where before each like little town or community had their own team and over time less and less participation. So they team up with like a couple communities. I think high schools are going to do the same thing. Like you said, just merging, maybe not all sports, but just football. Um, but I think it's not only high schools too. I think colleges are going that direction, which we'll get into later in the show with um, some of the new Alliance talk that came out, but do you have anything else for high school football before we move on? No, just opening, opening weekend this Friday dogs on the road. So yeah, go, go out and get that first win. Good luck. Um, we'll be following along and go to southboundsports.com. Check that out. I usually put the live feed if there is one. Uh, also make sure you subscribe to the show. And if you're looking for a way to support the show, I recently released a video game called To Touch the Stars as part of a game competition. So go to southboundsports.com. Uh, the competition went live at 9, which is when we started recording this. So it's not on there yet if you're watching live. But w if you're listening on the podcast, it will be there. 
you can go on vote for the show or vote for the game you can download it for free donations are welcome and uh help th- help support the show a different way if you're looking for something a little non-sports um but we're giving some more uh opportunities to check out content now the football started so definitely go to southbondsports.com bookmark it make sure you subscribe to our podcast because we have some new stuff that'll be coming out uh getting into the NFL now Washington football has come out and they released their list of names. This happened before. Like I'm not going crazy because they narrowed down the names before. And then what happened is there were some pushbacks and then they had that issue with like the guy that was squatting the trademarks or whatever. Yeah. So like they didn't actually come through. That's why they settled with the Washington football name. So here are their finalists. So they have three final names. They put eight on Twitter to kind of throw them off because like if someone's going to trademark these, which I would assume if they're coming down the line already having these, that they're not serious about them. The first one is keeping it the Washington football team. To be honest, I still think that's kind of dumb just based on location and how you know how often teams move these days. So if your team name is the state, like some names like the Lakers, yeah, having that in Los Angeles is dumb as hell. But, okay, Minnesota, there's tons of lakes there. That's where they are originally from. That's what the name means for people that don't know. But they just kept it because they moved to Los Angeles. So is it really the name or is it the location? Because if you name it the Washington football team, you can only move to the state of Washington. Or if you go, like, you find some city named Washington. I think there is a small town, or was it Washington Township or something in Pennsylvania, too? There's Washington, PA. So you can go, yeah. You're, you're very limited where you can go with that. Um, but the other names, and now I'm going to read them off and then you can give your thoughts. Armada, the Brigade, Commanders, Defenders, Presidents. Which those first five just seems like someone was playing a military board game and they're like, yeah. These can work. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Uh, then you have the Red Hogs, which, to be honest, I think if they go with that, dumb. But Pigskins was right there. It, Pigskins makes so much sense, and I love that the most because that was how, like, that's how they made their first football. Is like, let's get some history in there if you're going to blow up your team name. And then the uh, the Red Wolves. So Pigskins is not on there. Uh, but what do you think of those other names? And which th- three do you think that they are going to go with? I think one of them is just going to be to keep it as Washington football team. It's it's Sadly, it's a name that's growing on me. But I think that, like when I saw the Hogskins, I thought immediately that that sounds like something off of one of our many discussions of with the with the team name that would still incorporate the lineman from the eighties that really like was a, a positive mark yeah, but for they, them. They can't be the red hogs, Matt. You get a couple. Well, sunburned, do you, do you oh, think that no, no. Do you think that there's going to be overweight people that are going to be offended by that? That's what I was going to say. You get a couple sunburnt over obese people in the stands and then they're taking offense immediately. I should have put the Notre Dame thing up here because they're, they're getting their, their uh, crowd or whatever is going after them. the, I guess it wouldn't really be the job lynch mob, but whatever. Like they're going after that name. So like the red hogs calling someone a hog instantly offensive. I I don't see how they're going to go with that. (laughs) (laughs) that, Out of this list, that would be the funniest to go with because of all the different things you could do with the mascot. Like you could have like a weekly, like uh, Walmart, you take some, like some lady that, you know, is a beast right down there. And then she could be the hog for the day, or they even had the fans that dressed up with the hogs already. Perfect. Just go with that. Uh, but the rest of them, I think are super boring. Isn't the defenders. That's like, uh, that was DC. The, was that the XFL name? Yeah. So like, you're just taking their name. The DC it was DC defenders, right? Yeah. There's your boy pep. Yeah. That's what I thought. Pep Hamilton. So they would just become Washington defenders. So I don't think that's real. Although that would be kind of funny if they went that direction. Because then everyone would be like, hey, there is an XFL team. They got the call up, even though that's not true. 
but you're keeping the colors. So that kind of limits. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just tired of it. I really don't care. A lot of the NFL names are like pretty common names. So like they're used across sports, like Tigers, Lions. I guess Tigers isn't there. Um, but like the Lions, Bears. Like there's not that many names like that would be left for them to take, you know. The Red Wolves, like to me, why? Why add the red? You're just trying to throw that in there. Just be the Wolves. Like there's no team that has that, you know. Keep it simple, like those other ones. But I don't know. I feel like they're just throwing the red in there because they'll they'll connect it. They'll find like some species of red, red wolf or something that used to be in Washington D.C. You know how they always do that. Come up with the name first. Write the backstory later, and then they're probably like, "Hey, our colors were kind of red, even though it's more of a maroon and like what mustard." I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, we'll see. I think that. Out of all the NFL news, I mean, you have like the big hits. We already talked about that kind of in the scrimmage type stuff. Kids are going to be avoiding it. They're talking about it with Trevor Lawrence. Should he be taking hits? He hasn't learned yet. You you think kids are going to learn how to not take hits if they're not even going to get hit? But anyway, I don't want to keep talking about that. Uh, But let's go into anything else you have on the team names. No. I I hear a lot of stuff too. And um, this came up with college football, but I'll bring it up for the NFL. Because everyone's convinced that there's going to be like, oh, they're going to keep expanding, expanding. If the talent base in terms of players is shrinking, the NFL has like really nowhere to go. I don't even know. Uh, I know there was speculation about them having teams like overseas and stuff. That seems to not be happening. Maybe loner cities. But even like w- with this right now, there's really tying yourself to a region seems kind of like an outdated just way to go with it. I, mean, I almost think that was the way the NFL was looking to go. But then because of all of the issues that we've had with this pandemic, that it's put the kibosh to it. Because if, if they move it to overseas, now you're now you're dealing with foreign governments that are may or may not be handling. Oh, exactly. You know, Look at the mess that baseball and hockey had. Or like even the NBA where like wasn't one team just playing in Florida? Was it the Raptors? It's like, all right, hockey was kind of like, we'll do our own divisions, which I even forgot about. And then, like, they that kind of just lucked them out getting a team all the way up. But I don't know. You're right there. They're not going to do anything now. But, like, in terms of, like, even just having the ease, I almost wish, like, in terms of television contracts and stuff we're going to be talking about later with college, you don't need to be tied to Washington. Like, you're not selling – all the fans in Washington fans can't even really go to the games anymore. So it's easier just to watch on television. <laughs> Name it in Washington. I think 10 years from now, because I don't even want to say 20 because I think like 10 years from now, you'll start to see that, that a lot of those names are just, they'll, they'll just start dropping city and stuff locations because they want to be known world. Because with streaming and everything becoming more and more popular, once the NFL gets over their like fear of being like streamed online, and like I thought the NBA would really jump on it and push for it, but they haven't really. Like they're still going for the traditional television numbers overseas and stuff. Just put it on streaming, and and like you're already driving social media. Just try to get more people to watch overseas. You're going to make so much more money. But people aren't going to watch if they don't even care about the team. Like, oh, here's a team all the way over in wherever that you're never going to be. You're never going to see them. <laughs> like, they're not helping themselves make it international. And I, that's not just a Washington problem. Um, I did have only one more NFL thing because I hate talking about the preseason. I did, I did want to complain, though, about everything's on the NFL network. But then, like, you can't really pay for an NFL network. It's all through, like, cable or whatever. And you need to pay. Uh, you can pay for YouTube TV. Used to be like twenty or thirty bucks. Now it's sixty. It's like, all right, we're back where we were. TV has gotten no better. And so, if anything comes from the the alliance, we're going to talk about shortly. I hope that it's they have their own streaming package that's all in one, because that's been one of the rumors out there. I know we didn't talk about that because a lot of the rights right now are only television rights. 
And there are so many sports that are left behind that if they truly put together a Netflix of like historical content, I, I don't see how that wouldn't drive more revenue for them. But NFL's in the same boat. Uh, but now stadiums are opening up. Some are requiring vaccinations. Penn State isn't. So you don't have to be vaccinated to go into their game. I think they're going to be full capacity, right? I think. Um, I didn't read the entire press release. They sent they sent me the other one about the alliance. Their whatever their marketing guy for the show. But um, let's see. Oh, Steelers. They did have fans in the stands. That's where I was going with this. And there was a fight. I don't know if you saw the video, but a lady slapped a man that was sitting in front yeah. of her. I don't, I don't know what they were arguing about. I didn't listen to the audio. I just saw the video clip and I thought, why are you hitting someone? And then you're supposed to be like, you would think like after the pandemic that you'd come back. I'm sure they're boozing everybody up, right? Cause like, God forbid you don't get your $12 beers if you're at the game or $20 beers. How, how expensive have, are they getting? I think it was like 10 last time I went. Uh, but you're there, you take a slap, and then you knock the other guy out. Well, she might have just been drunk because it didn't look like he clocked him really hard. But he knocked out the guy that she she was with after the slap. He like faked a hit on her knowing that like if I hit this lady, I'm going down. So he waited for the guy to stand up and then knocked him out. And I thought, great, Steelers football. Right there. And and you know, and I'm talking about how are fans even gonna go to the games anymore? Chance of getting slapped, chance of getting hit. I mean the guy was, was just sitting there. I don't think he was I mean, I guess we only saw the clip, but he could have not been arguing, he could have just been sitting there drinking his beer. Next thing you know, he's getting punched for no reason. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, I left my house for this. Great. That's exactly what I want to be in. Into a scuffle into the into the crowd. But Crazy. There were a lot of empty seats, Matt. If they only have let people spread out a little bit, you know, <laughs> you know that they have guys watching that. So that would never happen. Well, I, th- I'm wondering how long it's going to take. I-, I know I saw LSU is already requiring people above the age of 14 to show a pause, either a, a clean COVID test or their immunization to be able to, to attend games this fall. I think that may be a route that a lot of people end up going to is to try to reduce the number of people getting into the stadium to use barriers like that to keep people out. But let's be honest. I mean, the vaccination seemed to be failing. So at, at what point do we reach critical fear here that they're going to cancel some games? Because, like, you're letting people in that show a vaccination card. And then I think it was L.A. They announced that, like, 25% of their new cases have been vaccinated, which is a fourth. Like, that's a ridiculously high number. Even though they say, like, the break po- breakthrough is, like, at 7% total now. Yeah. But, like, if that's, if the recent numbers are up to 25%, when do when do we start hearing those whispers of, Oh, just in time for football season? Maybe we're not safe to play anymore. I mean, you I think the NCAA role is and I, I the NFL, they're allowed to play, right? They just if they get it, they have to sit out if they're not vaccinated. I've been very cl- unclear on that. So they have to wear the wristbands. I know that. So they can get the additional tracking, but I don't I don't know if I ever saw what actually happens if they do. Like is it going to be a Chris Paul scenario where an unvaccinated person could get everyone tested. Yeah. And then they're all out. I don't know. NCAA said that if you're over nine, I think it was 90% vaccinated, then they're not even testing you because that's another thing too. How expensive are these tests? Like, is the government still covering that? I don't know. Like, I honestly don't know. But like, if you're an athletic league, like if you're the NFL and you have to pay for those, like, all right, if your guys are all vaccinated, are you going to keep paying for the tests? At what point does like it just break, you know? You reach the tipping point where it's like, all right, we're testing n- no one, no NFL player that I know has died, right? I don't think. I don't think so. But um, I don't want to get into that. That's like more 
political type stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll see fans in the stands. I don't know what all the rules are going to be. Everything's going to be different because it's all done by state or local type stuff. And each team could be different too because the owner might have his own thing. Like that Washington State guy, did you put in your resume, Matt? <laughs> did you see that? No. It's not NFL stuff, but the Washington head coach, Washington State, Mike Leach's old job. I don't want to get those confused. Uh, the Cougars. Their head coach announced that he wasn't going to get vaccinated. And so, like, he's been, like, teach, like coaching remote or whatever. Like, he's been in the booth the whole time. And he skipped Pac-12 days because you had to be vaccinated. So now the state or maybe the city he's in, they're now requiring it for state employees. So he either has to get vaccinated, maybe he has already, or I guess they're going to fire him, right? I don't know. Get your resume ready. You want to move out west? That's a little bit extreme. No one wants to coach there. It's pretty comfy, though. Mike Leach, was, he was comfortable there with only a couple wins a year, right? Yeah, it that, made, that is it, true. It took a while for him to turn it around, but, I mean, like that's a job for life, I would think, as long as you can get six wins. I don't know. I don't know how long-term it's going to be if the alliance and stuff falls through, but uh, I don't think there's any really other big NFL news. Did you have anything? Um, trying to think. I don't, not off the top of my head. I, I think we're just hearing the crazy stories where it's like, hey, Justin Fields took some crazy hits. Then it's like, all right, why, why is he out there? Um, he lost his helmet. Or it's like Trevor Lawrence. I feel like everything, it's, it's either like, hey, it's, it's preseason. No one really cares. And why are we still doing preseason? I see a lot of stories like that. And then it's all about the hits. But it's like, what do you want them to do? Come out there and, and they keep, they keep talking about how college doesn't have preseason. What do you think those warm up games are? And then you still have games where like App State beats Michigan. How many other upsets? Like even last year, Iowa State lost to like Arkansas State or someone like that, didn't they? Or Louisiana Monroe, maybe. Like I think it, it was to the point where that team almost ended up ranked or they were ranked at the end of last year, but those are their preseason games, guys. So all the NFL guys that are writing, what's the NFL going to do for practice? Like for real time? Because how many of these guys show up at training camp overweight, fat? You hear about it every year. Injured. How are they going to come back and get up the game speed? You're just throwing them out there week one? I don't know. I don't think they're going to get rid of preseason. Oh, every other sport has it. And I, I've said it. I've, I'm a proponent of getting rid of preseason in all sports. Like they already do how many summer league games? Do you need an official? Do you need an official NBA preseason? Like, who is that for? And I hate how they tore around. Like the Hornets will come up here to Raleigh and be like, "Hey, uh, we're your local team." It's like, no, you're not. How the hell are you local? It's like that's like a two and a half hour drive. You think people just make day trips down for like a, a Tuesday night game at seven or whatever the hell time they play? Like, nah. So, I don't know. I don't even know where the hell I'm going with that, but. That's all I had for the NFL stuff. Just it's just annoying the narrative. I just want it to start back up so I can just watch some games. Uh, but you have anything else? Nope. All right. The big topic. I feel like we've been talking about this for a while, so I don't want to harp on it too much. Um, but I did, did have some additional details on the NIL type stuff. But first, the Pac-12. It turns out they were the driving force behind this alliance that we talked. I, I know we talked about it on the show last week, unless maybe um, thinking that I just talked with too many people about it already that we talked. But um, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the ACC are now jo- joining up. And I, like I said, I have the press conference. I should have had this loaded, um, or not the press conference, the actual press release. I got it from like three different people. Um. Let me just read it to you. So the participants are the ACC, Big Ten, Pac-12. Oh, I guess I could have watched the media event. I did not. I just got the official press release. So the one from North Carolina, Greensboro, is where they, they called from or whatever. And this is what they said. They're world-leading academic institutions committed to the shared values of supporting the next generation of leaders. So their focus is on research. Nothing to do with sports. And then they talk about how they have 27 of the 34 
AAU research schools, which I've said, and I, I know anyone that listens to the show, you know, that's the big deal for the Big Ten. Like those research schools, there are almost none of them in the SEC. And they get a ton of money on the research side for faculty and everything through research. So that's big that right now these three conferences have, what, 27 out of 34 of them? That's a ton. They also announced that 34 of the institutions in here are ranked in the top 100 national using, national universities by U.S. News and World Report. Again, this is bull point, what, four? Nothing about sports, Matt. Nothing. Then it, then it goes into, here's the second half of the bullets, uh, athletic programs, blah, 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 history with over 27,000 athletes and talking about all their sports. They also say that they have over, or no, they do have 1,019 NCAA championships between all their schools and partnerships, blah, 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 Olympic stuff. So, and, and they're, and they're talking about their venues. Like, oh, we include some of the most iconic and historic venues in college sports. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Are they giving tours now? Is that part of this alliance? Yes. And and then, so this is their capper. This is what they talk about. Hundreds of millions of dollars in direct revenue for student-athlete scholarships, which you knew was going to come up. And then the last point, over $15 billion in federal research support. Which is again research money, nothing to do with sports. So if you're taking a conference that's coming together and there were rumors about how the SEC could pull some of these schools in, athlete, athletics isn't a big isn't as big a part of their university as research. So they're not gonna give up. Like, do you really think that like an Ohio State's gonna jump? I would be shocked if they did. For what? Football? Like the university makes so much more money on the research side of thing being in the, the big 10, like look at the, just the, the endowment levels. So if anything, it almost reads like a letter to Notre Dame, like, Hey, are you going to join this alliance or not? The sec president already came out or like the commissioner or whatever. He came out and they asked about reaching out to other schools. And he said, flat Notre Dame is the only school that could move the needle. Because they have the numbers. I went through the numbers last week. Texas and Oklahoma, they don't get as much TV viewers as what people would expect. So if you're doing it for TV money, is that it? Are you going to get a good, good return on your investment? They're obviously hoping they don't, they don't compete for championships with them. Maybe bringing in Oklahoma. I think they, they've been competing in like women's gymnastics and softball and stuff like that. Texas has their own sports, swimming, some other stuff. I don't know off the top of my head, but like maybe they're bringing the ends, like the SEC some extra championships. But if you're looking at schools just in terms of like getting together and having a conference, that, that alliance makes sense. I don't know in the grand scheme of things if it's going to matter, but, but what was your take on it? Are you still there? I'm here. What was your take on the alliance? I mean, I, it almost seems like they're starting to gear up towards like going head to head with the SEC, like just a direct, they're going to start trying to take out like from the, they have the strength of the funding and research side that play to your strength and try to, to generate your revenue through the means that you can. And in the process, if you can isolate out, the athletic part where the SEC has the upper hand right now, maybe, maybe you flip that into something. But honestly, I don't think the SEC has the upper hand. It's only football. Like, what else do they have the upper hand in? But I think that generates a pile of money. Yeah, but not compared to the numbers that they're talking, not billions of dollars. I had the SEC, the SEC numbers. I sent them to you before the show. Let me just get into them here because that's my last point. So the SEC... <laughs> Before Texas and Oklahoma, I didn't even realize this last week because I don't follow the SEC as close as what um, I guess I should if we're going to talk about it on the show. But in 2024, their CBS deal, Matt, is done. All of their games are going to be on ESPN or ABC, which is owned like it's the same company. So they're losing that additional TV arm. And I wonder how much that's going to hurt them. 
So their deal with, I didn't realize that deal goes to 2034. It's like almost as long as the ACC deal. So they're not, they're not renew, CBS isn't renewing them. No, they, they went, they took the ESPN bid. I mean, why wouldn't you? ESPN talks you up all the time. So CBS doesn't have football football in 2024 like that was when the big 12 like they had reached out and i guess maybe that's who they were talking with then because remember that's when their deal was up yeah and and then instead abc must have caught wind of that or disney and that that was the rumor because now texas and oklahoma they said why don't you just come with us maybe we'll bump the pay if they don't bump the pay the the payouts for them right now which would be 14 schools is 66 million a year, or I guess you could round it up to 67. So 67 million a year per school, which is double what the ACC and, and PAC 12 make. Uh, but in terms of adding two more schools in that, I think I saw that that would drop the revenue. I think they said that they would have to have 134 million extra from Texas and Oklahoma to make it worthwhile since they split the, the revenue even. So if ESPN doesn't give them an extra money bump for joining the conference, they're going to make what 60, 50 something. So it's even less than what I had, I had thought that they were going to get. Cause I, I have all the numbers I keep hearing are 70 to 80 million, but apparently that's not the SEC. And another twist that I don't think I've ever seen, cause of course ESPN isn't going to cover this. The big 12, the remaining, what is it? Eight schools now. Their commissioner is trying to file a lawsuit against ESPN for tampering. Don't you think uh, that he would have a pretty strong argument if ESPN automatically pays the SEC more money because they, they stole Texas and Oklahoma? Like that would create an instant paper trail that I think would legitimize his, his uh, lawsuit. So I don't know, even know what they would do at that point. Uh, but that's a key. Another key point too is the Big Twelve. They're not in the alliance; they're left out. So, like, what do they do? What do you think they do? I have no idea. I, I mean, I think maybe it's like they announce this alliance, and they're just hoping that with these other programs that they're able to get some of the the bigger picture things. Like, I I honestly have no idea. It's just it seems. It seems like they just want to kind of pretend they're looking out for their own interests to prevent the being poached off and letting the SEC just form a super conference of well, the best of each. See, my my thought process is, if you remember when this SEC expansion was announced, there were a bunch of articles that immediately came out about how maybe they shouldn't expand the playoffs anymore. Because you know... Maybe the SEC will get more teams in, but I think it benefits the SEC to keep it at four because then you're getting, if, I mean, they've already had two teams make it once. What if you get into half the playoff teams come from the SEC? That's going to give them a revenue bump. And then this alliance is immediately cut out. I think it's very strategic that they have three conferences, you know, aligning potentially to just automatically get those last three spots. Because I honestly think that they want to expand because I think of all the things that, that I've said before in terms of eyeballs, like the big 10 has two of the biggest schools. Notre Dame's aligned with the ACC. That's another one. Throw in the big money school like Oregon, some West coast stuff. They're going to want them in the playoffs. So if people think that if they go to 12, they're going to have five sec schools in every year. Like, you're kidding yourself. People aren't going to watch that. They already don't watch the playoffs. Like, the ratings are going down. They don't want to see Alabama. They'd rather see some of these other games mixed in, and they haven't been getting it. So I wouldn't be surprised if these three conferences, because also getting into some NIL stuff, I don't think that they want to blow up the NCAA. Everyone thinks that they want to go ahead and blow that up for some reason, but they paid out like a ridiculous amount of money. Each school like paid millions of dollars to the NCAA just to fight lawsuits last year. I wish I had the numbers. I should have saved it because guess what? The schools pick the NCAA. 
So the NCA is doing what the schools tell them to do. The sanctions and stuff, like you're always at risk or whatever, but I honestly don't think, like if the SEC breaks out of that, what happens to all their other sports? Like even Nick Saban said, oh, we'd go from 20 sports down to nine. And I don't think that these other schools want that because I also think it gives them visibility year round. You get the Olympic tie-ins. That's more of a national thing. You have how many more international students that come in and play these other sports that aren't even really in uh, America just because like, who knows, like high schools aren't playing some of the sports that were in the Olympics. Have you seen a Claysburg handball game, Matt, or whatever? No, you've never seen that. So like those are just ways for them to attract international students, which again helps their research and stuff. Like I guarantee that this is more. Although in my defense, I haven't haven't been actively looking for it. So it could be there and and I just. It could break out every once in a while. (laughs) It could just be maybe that's where all everyone else is. Like why are my numbers so low? They're all just playing handball. (laughs) I mean, to be honest, like that's a big thing. And who knows if football would, were to disappear, like, could you imagine, like, let's say Florida state jumped to the sec. Cause like, I, I want to get your perspective. What do you think if it was up to you, what would you have Florida state do? I mean, I, I would need to know to understand more of what the intentions are. I mean, I just don't think for them to go into the sec at this point, what would be good for them? I don't think it would either. And I'll say this. Because like I I know I always knock knock basketball down on here, but like we we covered pretty extensively for March Madness. Florida State's been doing well, Michigan's been doing well, SEC's been been uh, turning things around, and they've been starting to compete in basketball. But like if football ended today, like let's say there was an, uh, enough lawsuits that came out where they were like, yeah, football has to end. Um, all the revenue that you made joining the SEC is gone. Poof. People aren't watching SEC basketball, man. No. They're, they're just not. They're not watching SEC anything else. It's only football. So you're gambling with your university when you have all these other research things. Like a lot of those schools, like they keep saying, and I wonder if it keeps schools from jumping conferences, but money's going to talk. Because if that Big Ten number comes out and the ACC is stuck at 30 million with ESPN for however many years, Maybe this alliance is a way for them to get out of that television deal somehow and and put up the bid because like you can't tell me that CBS wouldn't want to take a bid at these other conferences knowing that they lost that premium 330 game that they've had for however many years. Like that's been a stable for what 30 years now? Maybe, yeah. maybe even longer and it's gone. And so like now they're even talking about NBC being interested which has to make Notre Dame pissed off because could you imagine if they're like, yeah, Notre Dame, your numbers haven't really been that good. We decided to show Ohio state play Purdue today. Like (laughs) Notre Dame would be so mad because like they've had that relationship with NBC for however many years. And, and that's one of the rumors that like NBC is in on this big 10 bid. They definitely want that. And they want to try to get some sports for Peacock is what I heard. I don't know how that's going to work because I hated the Olympic presentation. So I would really be annoyed if they went that route. But who knows? Streaming is going to be the future. So if the Big Ten jumped in and they had like a Peacock Sports Network or whatever NBC calls it, as long as they show the games, I don't care. Like just get it as an option at this point. And if you have three conferences full of schools to have a streaming thing like Netflix, like you're telling me like if let's say if this alliance happened – and you're paying what, what's Netflix? 15, 20 bucks. And you'd get every sport, like whatever, from all of those schools. Maybe not the football games live or whatever because of television contracts. Cause that's where the big money comes in. But all the other ones you can watch at any time. Like I, I would pay for that. That might be the only sports network that I pay for. Cause like if you pay for NFL, that's what three or four months of the year. You're going to be canceling, right? That's why they make you pay up front or like three monthly charges. That's like what Major League Baseball does. But you're getting year round content. I mean, as long as your school's not garbage at basketball and football, then maybe you'd have nothing to watch. But I don't know. It'll be tough. Uh, the, the NIL stuff that I had to bring in, um, I actually was talking to someone about this and I didn't even think. Because I made it sound so simple on the show that as a player, you could just go out and do stuff. But the NIL 
there's been a b- bunch of hangups. I talked about Hunter Dickinson with Michigan saying like there's been some – it's been tough for him to get deals. It's not just in Michigan. Um, it's an issue at every school because of the way that they do the legal contracts. So if players want to go out and like let's say Pitt, if they want to go out and and take uh, prom- promo photos with like the, the Pitt basketball program or the Pitt football program, number one, you have to have clearance to use it. Not only, and I'm using Pitt as this example so it makes sense to everybody, not only just clear it with Pitt, you also have to clear it with the Steelers or the owners of Heinz Field, or I think that, which is the Steelers, right? Don't, doesn't the Rooney's own that? Yep. I don't know how the Heinz ties into it if they have anything, but you could have to, as a player, you might have to get three or four sign offs just to sell some promo stuff that you're going to do there. Like if you're going to have a signing, like, it's not just, Hey coach, I'm going to do this. And I mean, if you, he says, great, you can do whatever you want, but you can't wear pit stuff until we clear it because like, who knows? You can't start like an only fans, only fans got rid of their sex work or whatever. You can't, you can't start like a basketball program where you're like out there doing dribbling. They would want to know what was on that premium content. Like what, what are you actually doing? So, um, I understand that from a point, but I also wonder how schools are going to make this easier because I think immediately schools that are able to figure this out and already have a preset deal that's shown to be lucrative because like Michigan's opened up with like their, their athletic apparel store, the M den, if they're able to show numbers like, Hey, you're coming in as a big time recruit. The last guy we got that was ranked in the top 10, he sold Hundred thousand jerseys, one to every one that fills our stadium. You know how much he made? Like three, like a cool three million on that deal. Like that's going to be the recruiting from now on, because you're going to say like, "Hey, we this is this is the NIL stuff we set up. This is how much these other guys made. You can do better." And then the kid's going to think like, oh, "I can do better," you know? They haven't won. They won what two games last year? That's embarrassing. <laughs> and they're bringing in that much money. He sold a hundred thousand jerseys. Because right now, um, I actually looked through these before the show just to kind of get some ideas. You see like weird, um, shirts, like even Dabo Sweeney's kids. I think like, doesn't he have two kids that were playing? Um, they were selling a bunch of shirts about being the Sweeney brothers. I think it was his kids. Maybe it was some coach's kids where they had twins. And so they had a bunch of shirts that had like their name and like them being twins on it. Nothing about where they played football. And then I was thinking, like, who would buy that? Like, you would have to really be a fan of just them, you know? Yeah. Where, like, if the, the real cream is if you can just get that that Michigan basketball jersey that says Dickinson on the back, knowing that Hunter Dickinson is going to take you to the Final Four next year, hopefully, you're like, all right, he was close last year. He can get it this year. I'm going to buy this Dickinson jersey, and then he gets a cut of it. Because, like, we've already seen stadiums full of, like, uh, Deion Sanders jerseys after he retired or after he goes to the NFL, you know? So like all they need is a little cut of that. Michigan always sold that generic number one. Coincidentally, guess what? That's what the best wide receiver or best player on offense wore. That same number one. So like they're kind of skirting that rule in, uh, already. So I'm like, all right, there we go. Now you can get the number one with the name on the back. Perfect. They just have to sign up. Like they, or they just have to get it set. I think it's just too new right now. So I wonder how like the alliance isn't going to matter with that. Because like if you have a bigger school, and a lot of the Big Ten schools are much bigger than the SEC schools, you have more opportunities for people to buy random jerseys. You have more opportunities for guys to do whatever, and really funnel that extra money in. They just don't have the numbers to show those recruits yet. So I wonder how in five years how that will change. Um, but television schedules are going to change. That's what the Alliance is about. We'll see. Um, I, I hope we don't talk about this more, but we'll, we'll see. That's just a big news today. Getting texts about it. I figured we'd talk about it on the show before season actually starts. You have anything else on it? No, I don't. I did have one other call triple story before we get into our picks. Uh, and I mentioned it earlier. They're coming after the fighting Irish. So they started to, um, I think it was like a pool or something, where Notre Dame, they have the fourth offensive mascot. And then they were like, <laughs> and of course, like normally you see that, like you're the school and um, 
you're like, all right, okay, whatever. But um, you ignore it, but not Notre Dame. So I have the story here. I'm, I'm trying to look through to see who commented on it. But the university said, it just says the university doesn't give a name. There's no comparison between Notre Dame's nickname and mascot and the Indian and warrior names and mascots used by other institutions. That's a shot fired at Florida State. Such as the NFL team formerly known as the Redskins. None of these institutions were founded or named by Native Americans who sought to highlight their heritage by using names and symbols associated with their people. So they're saying because they were founded by Irish guys that they're cool. Yeah. Florida State not founded by Seminoles. They just stole it like they stole their land, Matt. That's what Notre Dame's saying here. With approval of but the I, tribe. It can be here, but right here, the most offensive mascot, Florida State's Osceola and Renegade. <laughs> 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 followed by the San Diego State's Aztec Warrior, which, okay, yeah. But I don't think a lot of people know who San Diego State is, really. Unless you follow basketball, but they don't know the mascot, really, right? And then, <laughs> the in a, in, a, in a twist, Hawaii's Warrior, which is like, um, I don't know what that what that is, but that's the third most defensive. So it must be like their native nickname form or whatever but that's the warrior how i mean isn't it made by them i don't know but they there's been fans even max kellerman at espn that's been urging notre dame to adapt a new mascot saying that while some irish are offended um or others while some are not offended others may be but like i'm an irish guy i really don't care I think if you erase like a bunch of the, the names like that, like if Notre Dame would cut that heritage and that identity, how many fans would they lose? Because like, I think they still get a lot of fans that pull for them that are just Irish Catholic guys or gals that grow up and maybe they go to a small private Catholic school, which let's be honest. There are a lot of them. Georgetown, Villanova, Gonzaga. How many of them have big boy football, Matt? None. <laughs> Who do you think they root for when football comes around? Probably probably Notre Dame. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Like they have that Catholic um, coalition. I don't know if that's the actual name for it. But there's that Catholic thing where like all those schools are kind of connected and researched, just like the Alliance talked about there. So why not? If you don't have a football team at your school. Like, hey, uh, I'm down here in Georgetown. Like, yeah, you want to go to the football game? Like, the Maryland Terrapins? Like, no. I'm not going to cheer for them. Like, we're rivals in basketball. You're not going to cheer for your rival in football, you know? It's not like, it's not like, uh, like growing up. Like, I see a lot of people from Pittsburgh that when LeBron was there, they they instantly became Cleveland Cavs fans. I'm like, how can you even clear, cheer for a Cleveland team? Cleveland's supposed to be the rivals. They take their, 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 their their baseball name, excuse me, and name it the Guardians, like ridiculous. And then the Browns are just hot garbage. Their players hit their hit our guys with helmets. <laughs> like, how are you going to cheer for them? Oh, but we don't have a basketball team, so I'll cheer for LeBron and the Cavs. It's like, no, what are you doing? Pick some other ra- random town. So, I don't know. I don't think that they're going to get rid of it, and I hope that they don't. And I'm not affiliated with them in any way. So... If they do, that's just one more reason for me to hate them and hope that Michigan keeps a rivalry with them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh. That'd be basically be saying like, yeah, Irish aren't even welcome here. We're going to go with um, – what would they even change it to? Shamrocks or something ridiculous? It would be like that, it'd be like that Washington football list. Just shamrock shakes. It would so. be like Lucky Charms, a pot of gold. Like what stuff is kind of Irish but not really – offensive green like the i think Isles. they would end up i think they would end up isolating so many people because they would just they're sick of everyone just being offended by everything that it would just really really sink them the only thing that i could see is like the fighting part you know because they're like oh uh, yeah irish guys they, they start drinking beer and then they start fighting like that's where they get the name or whatever <laughs> i don't think that's the actual name or the reason they get that name 
But you know, it's kind of like that's what people think. Like, oh yeah, they're drinking a lot, right? Getting into bar fights. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, that's like the only reason. Like, I would think that that would be offensive, right? I don't know the history. I, I, like, I haven't looked it up. I think it's something because, like, wasn't it? It was something. I think someone gave them a quote and said, "Like, they're just a bunch of fighting Irish." Like, about their football team is where they got the nickname from. I could be wrong on that, but like, not an offensive thing. A lot of teams were named by the newspaper. I think even like the NC State Wolfpack, they they changed their name from something else before because a newspaper wrote an article and they said like their fans. It sounded like a bunch, like a wolf, wild wolf pack out there or something like that. So they just, it just stuck. So if Notre Dame got the same thing, like, I just don't see why, why you would change it now. Like, well, we're, we're over like a hundred years later, Matt. Yeah. I don't know. Like a ah, hundred years. Like, ah, that's nothing. They'll just become the Notre Dame football team. And then I'll just hate them even more. They'll be the South Bend football team. Yeah. Become South Bend. That'd even be funnier. Because they're probably trying to distance themselves with that location for recruiting as much as possible, which I don't even know why they don't. Because, like, what's the – does the NCAA have a rule that they have to be located? Because, like, I know that there's been, like, things like when Harbaugh had the satellite camp, that the stuff like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, your team's not located where you're having these camps. Like, that's unfair. You're just illegally recruiting. But, like, what if Notre Dame just decided to build their stadium in Miami? It's like, what would stop them? <laughs> like if some big donor was like you know what we're gonna start playing notre dame games in miami we're gonna actually gonna do a split mat we'll play the miami ones when it's like in the winter but like the first part of the season like when it's nice in the fall like the nice midwest crisp games when it just rains like through october like perfect and then like the november december games like you're playing down in, in miami like what would the ncaa even do like you're flying the guys all over the country anyway. What's the difference where you're located? We're like South or Notre Dame here at South Bend. I mean Miami, Florida. Like look at the beaches. <laughs> like, <laughs> you would instantly have it because you don't have any state funding, right? They're private completely, aren't they? Like Catholic Church owned. So who's stopping them from moving? Same with like Gonzaga. They can yeah, do whatever they want, I guess. Unless I mean I don't know if NCAA rules are against that type of stuff, but. That, that's what I think would be the future. Schools that have it. Cause like for baseball, it makes complete sense. Like Notre Dame's not really competing in baseball. It must be hard to recruit up there. Like I know you're, you're going to school. A lot of school classes are offered virtually now. Why not have the Notre Dame campus of wherever Major League Baseball has spring training? And then look guys, you're right here. All the scouts are right here anyway. You're playing a games is brilliant. Brilliant marketing. Call me up, Notre Dame, if you want to give me like an honorary degree. I'll help you set this up. <laughs> <laughs> I gladly accept, and then I'll tell everyone that I'm not offended with the Fighting Irish name too. Put that, put that in the contract. Um, a- anything else you had for college football? No. All right, we got our games. First slate of games. Um, I'm not going through all these because it's like week zero, finally happening. But I want to get your picks: Nebraska and Illinois. Who do you got? Go Scott Frost. He's done. I knew you were going to bring him up. So did you see the practice thing? Nebraska said that they have hours of illegal practice footage that they just found. Why would they find that footage, Matt? So they don't have to pay him. Yep. So they don't have to pay Scott Frost. They're setting it up now, which I don't know why you leak it before the season. So they know you've been cheating and you well, haven't actually, been winning. Well, actually, from their perspective, they leaked it early, kind of like an Urban Meyer thing, so that when they, if he starts off bad and they have to fire him, they can be like, look, we didn't even know you are going to be this bad. Like, we had to announce that earlier. And if he ends up going good, now they can say, like, look, he, he fought through adversity. At least you know he's not cheating because we already reported that, right? Wink, wink. <laughs> and, unless, like... Because I'm thinking that no matter what, they're looking at it and saying, like, recruiting's not picking up. And, like, where are you going to go from there? I did see someone had a proposal. They were, like, it was one of those petition things where they were trying to get Nebraska to leave the Big Ten to join back up with the the Big Eight, the Big 12 leftovers. And since they were losing Texas and, and them stealing all the money, they were going to offer Nebraska – to bring back partial qualifiers 
which I said, if you look at the way that dropped off, as soon as the NCAA kind of rolled them illegal or whatever, Nebraska hasn't been the same. Yep. I mean, that was before they even went to the Big Ten. I know they had the Ndamukong N- Sioux year where they were close, but that would be an interesting twist where they're like, you know what, guys? We were in that announcement where they talked about all that research money. We don't actually want that. We, we just want partial qualifiers. <laughs> <laughs> we just want athletes. Like, we don't care. Because, I mean, I, but but they, see, like, they're competing in the Big Ten and other sports. Like, they were winning ba- volleyball national championships. So, like, that's where people are like, oh, yeah, Maryland, they're such a joke. They're winning, like, a ton of lacrosse and soccer championships that the Big Ten wouldn't have been winning without them. Like, the only thing that they're garbage at is football. Maryland's okay at basketball. Nebraska basketball, not that good. They're one of the worst. But, I mean, <clears throat> if they left, I would think that would be hilarious. Because I really don't care either way about them. Um, but we'll see. Next game, Hawaii and UCLA. That's close. I'm going to go Hawaii. I actually don't know because I don't know what to expect from UCLA and see like if the Pac-12 wants to stay relevant, like you have to start winning these games. Like you can't just be in the, like in the early part of the season, losing games and having your, your guys have eight wins total because they already have four losses. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, this is a kind of marquee game. People know who Hawaii is. In the grand scheme of things, UCLA is a favorite by 18 points. I don't know what to expect from UCLA. I think that they'll win this one. I didn't make my first pick either. Um, but I, I have Nebraska going in that one. Illinois, I think they're lost their way, and they're bringing in Bielema. And Bielema hasn't had success. He's kind of like one of those dinosaurs where I guarantee his guys have been hitting in practice, and they're doing all the old-school stuff that I talked about. Is it enough to win there? I don't know. Can you have the whole West Coast just be physical or West Big Ten just be physical teams? I don't know if you can. Uh, let's see. My next one, Temple and Rutgers. This is the, the Thursday night Big Ten. Or actually, no, that's next week, so never mind. We'll we'll come back to that next week. Um, that's really it for the big games. On I was thinking that that was next or whatever. But we'll have a show before that one. So we have... Yeah, just some other ones, UTEP and Mexico, New Mexico State, which doesn't matter, and Southern Utah and San Jose State. But those same ones, I think that they should try to get a couple more marquee games that opening weekend. Because I thought you had to play Hawaii to even play that game. I don't know how Nebraska and Illinois pulled it off. But, um, <laughs> that's all I have. Anything for the final bell, Matt? I was just happy to see last night that uh, the LASIK surgery that Jameis Winston got seems to have worked. Two touchdowns, one incomplete pass, look crisp. Maybe there was something there. Maybe. Do you think they'll even uh, matter? you think he's going to get a lot of playing time? I think he will. Modern modern science marvel. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, but that's all we have for this week. Like I said, go to southboundsports.com. You'll be able to check Matt's game out there, um, help support the show. Make sure you subscribe and tell your friends. Football will be back next week, so we'll finally have a regular show, and I'm looking forward to that. So thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.